Hello my beautiful watchers and welcome to my For No Reason Q&A video. Uh, a huge thank you to everyone who sent in a video question and apologies in advance if yours didn't make it in. I really wish I could have answered all of them, but I kind of got quite a few. Uh, anyway, let's do this. Hey Mr. The Dom, here's a question for you. Have you ever considered writing a screenplay or novel? And if so, what would they be about? I've tried doing both over the years. Uh, I wrote the first chapter of a science fiction story, uh, but then had to give up because my dyslexia was fucking with me too much. Um, my screenplays kind of suffered the same fate. Uh, I'm also not entirely convinced that I would in fact be any good at it. Um, making a show like Lost in Adaptation is no real indication that I'd be able to write my own stuff. You know, uh, being good at picking apart other people's work doesn't necessarily translate to making my own. Hello, the handsome Dom. So, this may be just the most important question that's asked. You know that eyebrow lift that you do? Is that a natural talent or did you practice? And if it's the latter, could you give us some tips on how we two can do the Spock? You have actually hit the nail on the head there, Jamie. I did indeed practice. Uh, when I was 10, I used to spend hours holding my eyebrows up until I figured which muscles were responsible for their independent movement, and I did it because I was a huge Star Trek fan and I wanted to be more like Mr. Spock. Uh, fun fact, I went to Catholic school, but I had no real interest in religion, so uh, I used to use the RE lessons for said practice. Uh, the teacher would be going on about the history of Christianity, and I'd be right at the back of the class going, Come on! Yeah. Um, if memory serves, that was the school that asked that I be tested for attention deficit disorder twice. So I guess that would be my tip if you're looking to learn how to do it. You have to not care that you're going to look like a complete pillock while you practice. Hey you Dom, my question is, is there any a piece of written media which you feel should never be adapted into anything ever? Yes, lots of things actually. Uh, with most of them, it would be because the books are just so poor I don't think they deserve an adaptation, but with one or two, uh, I think it's just because they're so perfect in book form and it would be so hard to adapt them into film, I think we should just leave them be and not even try. You know, uh, the works of Terry Pratchett swing to mind. So, will you ever do a Lost in Adaptation on comics? Because I wanted to get your take on Batman. The 1989 one. Or will you continue The Hobbit and finish that trilogy up? Because you know us assassins, when nothing is finished, we get really angry. In regards to the comic, uh, I am very hesitant to ever take on something like Batman or anything that's been around for an awful long time, uh, because I'm just not much of a comic book guy myself. I have nothing against them, they're just not my thing. And even with self-contained standalone stories, I just know there will be so much stuff that goes completely over my head because I lack the necessary knowledge of the comics history and you know all the backstories to get the references. So uh, I honestly just don't want to put comic book fans through that. I'm thinking of you guys, I really am. In regards to The Hobbit, y'all need to back off about that. See, I know what's happened here. You've got spoiled by me doing the Harry Potters all at once. I never said I was doing a Hobbitathon. In all seriousness though, it was always the intention for me Kaluna to keep doing these as crossovers, so uh, they just have to wait until we're at another convention together before we can do the next one. Uh, that's looking like Con Bravo in July at this point, so August is going to be the earliest you can expect to see that. Hello the Dom, are you planning on making any new characters? If so, are you going to make t the sub, as you are doing the Fifty Shades of Grey? While I do see the comedy potential in that play on words, I think I'm going to steer clear of it because there's already far too many people who are confused about if I am that kind of Dom. Hi Dom, this is Anagios from Greece. Congratulations on 50,000 subscribers. Now my question to you is, what are your thoughts on the Dragon Age franchise? Have you played the games, read the books, or the comic books? And if so, in the future, should we have a TV series or a movie? I have played the games, very fond of them. Uh, the original Dragon Age may have been partially responsible for me almost failing my first year of university. Um, it was certainly responsible for me getting very little sleep during that time. However, I've not read the books or the comics. Um, I've never really been interested in things that are adapted from video games, uh, be they books, comics or even films, uh, because I've always found them to be at best kind of average and at worst pretty appalling. I mean, Dragon Age may well be the exception, but I, I don't really feel tempted to find out. As a result, I don't really think I can voice an opinion opinion on the film versus TV series thing, sorry. Welcome to the world kind of like Narnia, where animals are still small and subservient to humans. For now, where speech is granted to those appearing in a Q&A, where I, the great Oswald, sit in this cage, rather unimpressively. But either way, I have a question for you, as relayed by this human recording device that is now upon the internet. If you could have any book adapted to film, 
that does not yet have a movie adaptation, what would it be and why? Now be gone. I must return to my preening. Um, I suspect I'm not the person to answer this. Hang on a second. Greetings, Aussie. I am Petrie, the loud, obnoxious, and needlessly aggressive. I'm here to tell you that the Dom is torn between a big screen adaptation of Sharp's Eagle, which until now has only had a low budget TV adaptation, and Gridlinked by Neil Asher, because he really wants to see this high tech weapon in it called Shuriken in action. Good day to you! Hello, the Dom. Excuse my bed head, but me and Terence just got done. Uh, um, if you can find your way to St. Mungo's, you might want to ask them about a condition called hypermagical vela herpes. Um, it's actually significantly worse than it sounds. I was wondering, as a fellow British person, or Brit, as the Americans would refer to us. Yes, I wish they wouldn't. I truly detest that term. Living in America, what's the thing you dislike the most about it here? I hate PP and J. What if what even is PP? Ah, yes, no, I can see why you're confused. Um, Americans have this bizarre idea of what constitutes jelly. It's most illogical. Um, but I'm afraid I can't answer your main question because I have not, in fact, moved to the US yet. It's scheduled for October, barring catastrophic catastrophe. Hey, Dom. I'm Ryan. Hello, Ryan. I like your hair. Are you, or do you plan to, do, an, a, song, uh, do a Song of Ice and Fire review? If you do, can you maybe give us a sneak peek of this and give us your opinion of a certain character. Maybe you can save it for the last adaptation of the TV show, but I really want to know for this video. What is your opinion on Tywin Lannister? My personal opinion is he may be a dick, and he fucking is, he's a dick, but he's a logical dick. Yes, he, he mistreated Tyrion, he abused Tyrion, he mistreated Cersei. He tried to groom Jaime into being the perfect warrior when Jaime didn't want that. But if you look at Tywin's history, you can understand why. I just want to know your opinion on Tywin, and if you're going to do a last adaptation of A Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm so sorry, I blanked everything you said after Logical Dick. Um, all I can think about is Mr. Spock's penis now. Uh, didn't see that, uh, Dom. Ha! I like this kid. He's got showmanship. Uh, one question. Just one. Actually two, but I will say one first. Where did you get the idea for Terence? Well, I believe I've said before, my initial inspiration for Terence came uh, from me accidentally offending some Hufflepuffs in Manchester Comic Con, and then he just sort of evolved on his own after that. And also, when, when will you review this book? I love this book. When will you review it? Please, I'm begging you. Uh, well, I... Don't know, I'm sorry. Hello, the Dom, you glorious man amongst men, women, and others. Kitty! I was wondering if you were ever considering having another character similar to Terrence on, just another character to interact with, or if you think he'll be the only one you'll use. Oh, I have no doubt there'll be others in the future. I'm not gonna force it, though. I'm gonna wait until the introduction of someone new feels natural, you know? What is truly the worst movie you've ever seen in your life? If we're counting so bad that it's funny, then Birdemic. Uh, if we're just talking so bad it's kind of depressing, then The Benchwarmers. Hey Dom, have you ever considered doing adaptations for things that aren't books? Like, say, a movie based on a stage play, or a movie based on a TV show? Considered, yes. Have any desire to experiment with at the current time? No. Hey Dom, I love your show, but my question is for Terrence. Oh, for goodness Woo! sake. Calm down. I was sorted into Hufflepuff. I know, I'm sure you find that tragic, but it's my house and I'm proud of it. Nonetheless, I'm an American and that means I would have gone to Ilvermorny. And I was, I was sorted into Thunderbird, which values scholars. People who have an appreciation for education. Now, does that mean that I'm American smart, but UK loyal?
Does this mean that Americans can't be held at the same standard as Europeans? Honestly, I think it's much more of an indication that Pottermore's gone seriously downhill since they changed it and can no longer be counted on as a reliable reflection of your house. But if you're really worried, I would remind you that at this point we basically know that it's actually much more complicated than that. The Sorting Hat, or whatever your American equivalent is, sees much more than just your personality traits or your intelligence. On the surface, Granger should probably have been in Ravenclaw and Longbottom might have been much happier in Hufflepuff, but the hat saw that Gryffindor is where they needed to be. So, no, I don't think it's different standards of intelligence that's to blame for this inconsistency. I suspect it's far more likely that your destiny lies with Thunderbird for some far greater purpose that has nothing to do with your loyalty or your skill as a scholar. Keep an eye out for it and let me know what happens, would you? I'm quite curious. Hi, I was wondering how you approach something when you're about to do a Lost in Adaptation episode on it. Do you take notes on the book or the movie when you're reading and watching it, or do you just read the book and then watch the movie? and maybe go over parts later to see what you missed. Uh, yes, it's pretty much as you guessed. If I've not read or watched them before, I'll read the book first and then take notes while I'm watching the film. Uh, and if it's a film I've already seen, then I'll take the notes when I'm reading the book. And yes, I will almost always end up going back and watching bits several times to make sure I haven't missed anything. Will you consider doing a Lost in Adaptation reversal, where you look at a movie or TV series that was adapted into a book or comic? For example, the Red Dwarf novels. Uh, I'm afraid that that is a resounding nope, 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 no, nope, absolutely not, never. Um, you actually mentioned one of the very few exceptions to this rule, but I find that novelizations of films and the like to be almost always so frickin' terrible they're not worth talking about. I mean, even more so than adaptations of video games. So if you could have any other job in the world, what would it be? Uh, well, that depends, actually. Um, if I'm being given a choice, I'd actually prefer to keep this job. Uh, there really is nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing right now. Um, I'm not trying to sound cheesy, it's like... What I'm doing now is the only job you can do that's film related where you have 100% creative control of what you do and are only accountable to yourself. And, well, I mean, maybe my Patreons, but I don't mind that. If you're saying I have to choose another job, um, I guess stand-up comedian, maybe? Um, I suspect I currently lack the confidence and stage presence to do it, but uh, I always thought that sort of thing would be cool. As a dyslexic, have you ever tried audiobooks? And if you have, has the quality of the narrator affected your opinion of the book? Have you liked it more or less, or has it changed your view of the movie? Uh, I have tried audiobooks, but it's got nothing to do with my dyslexia. My reading's actually fine, it's my spelling that sucks to high heaven. It's mostly because I'm really not that into music, but I still like to have something to listen to on long drives or when I'm working out. Uh, yes, the narrator is very important to almost all of those things. Um, a really good or really bad narrator can colour my opinion of the, the book, the film, the adaptation, the whole shebang. The review of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was, you know, kind of different and interesting compared to your other Lost in Adaptation ones. Is that just sort of a one-off thing, or are you thinking of maybe looking at other books that have been adapted multiple times and comparing the quality of adaptations, like with Anna Karenina or Pride and Prejudice? Well, I sort of did that again already with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I mean, I know it wasn't a 50-50 split, but I did talk about the Swedish original quite a lot in that. I might do another double episode again someday, but I probably won't do exactly the same diverging timelines thing, as I don't like to repeat jokes once I think they've run their course. Hi Dom, will you ever do a Lost in Adaptation on the Doctor episode The Family of Blood? Because I feel I, it would be a very interesting one for you to take on. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm really not much of a Doctor Who fan. Yeah, I know. Combine that with my dislike of tea, and I really am the worst Englishman ever. It's uh, probably my American heritage fucking with me. As it happens, I have seen the episode you're referring to, but I had no idea it was based on a book. Uh, I suspect this is going to be kind of like the Batman thing again, where there's just too much continuity involved for a non-fan like me to do it justice, so probably not. No, sorry. the time I didn't hear you come in. Hey, hey, hey! Don't be ripping off showmanship, kid. You know how there's been a lot of movie adaptations of stories and books from the Bible, like, I don't know, Exodus and its movie adaptation, The Ten Commandments? An excellent film would make a fine addition to your Lost in Adaptation series. So, my question for you, the Dom, is actually quite simple. Will you ever do a Lost in Adaptation of a story or book from the Bible? Uh, yes. Greetings, the Dom. I am the fan without a face. The first one is my preferred question that I'm hoping you'll answer. 
is whether or not you will do a Lost in Adaptation of Stephen King's It, specifically the miniseries. I figure that with the remake coming out in the coming in September, it would make sense to do a review of it since it's becoming more relevant now. Um, yes. Uh, now I have a question for you. Can you breathe okay in that thing? Because I'm quite concerned. There doesn't appear to be any air holes, and I can see it contorting inwards alarmingly when you inhale. Hi, Dom. I've got a question for you. What's the deal with Reginald? How long have you known him? How did you even meet? And are you going to ever give him a vacation? I think he deserves it at this point. Okay, well, first of all, no, no, he most certainly has not, the lazy bugger. Um, second of all, well, it's not the most interesting of stories, but if you really want to know... <clears throat> About five years ago, I discovered an eon-old cache of alien technology deep underneath the ground in the Antarctic. I quite forget what I was doing there now, but I discovered several interesting things, including something I later named the Legion device. Now, I have to admit, I may have rushed into using it a little quickly, and things got a little out of hand. If anyone's receiving this transmission, please send help. There's one device that allows you to clone yourself, which is pretty cool, but it turns out one clone in seven is created with specific abnormalities. Extremely heightened strength and reflexes. An unusually large pinky finger. Only speaks in quotes from Josh Whedon's Firefly for some reason. Pure evil. He's here! Ah! 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 Not my face! Ah! Not my exquisite ah! face! Ah! I won't bore you with the details. Suffice to say, things got straightened out in the end. Shiny. Uh, sort of. Uh, I took the Legion device home with me and decided to use it to make a handy clone butler. Annoyingly, Reginald, as I named him, got tired of his life of servitude quite quickly and decided to escape and pursue a career as a professional reindeer jockey in Norway. So that I wouldn't notice his absence and try to retrieve him, he used the Legion device to create a clone of himself to take his place. Even more annoyingly, his successor quickly followed in his footsteps, escaping to follow his dreams and leaving behind a copy of himself. This cycle continued until, due to the nature of clone degradation, a Reginald was created who was too stupid to work the device, so has been stuck here ever since. You see, I warned you it was a dull story. Hello, the Dom. My question for you is, do you watch anime? If so, what are your favourite and least favourite animes? Yeah, I like me some anime. Um, I wouldn't say I have any least favourites as I tend to just avoid the bad ones. Uh, let's see, I like uh, Hunter x Hunter. Attack on Titan, Fairy Tale, My Hero Academia, um, the first half of the first season of Sword Art Online, which I will defend to the death, but the rest of it can fuck right off. Um, let's see. Uh, I like the first hundred or so episodes of Naruto and Bleach, if you pretend the filler doesn't exist. Have you ever visited your TV Tropes page? Well, I'm breaking my cardinal rule not to engage semi-naked people on the internet in conversation, but uh, yes, I do like to keep an eye on it. Um, in fact, I actually got the idea for the name of the in-name-only clause from my TV Tropes page, making it an oddly symbiotic relationship. Um, amusingly, it then got updated to reference the fact that I referenced it, and now I'm referencing the fact that they referenced that I referenced the- Hello, the Dom. My questions for you are, when are you going to do Lost in Adaptation Game of Thrones? Do you think there can ever be a good Fifty Shades of Grey adaptation that doesn't get affected by the book's ramblings? Uh, why do you hate serious and unfortunate events, and have you read the Wizard of Oz sequels? That is probably more than your fair share of questions, young lady, but I shall make an exception just this once. <laughs> Smoke bomb! Honestly, I think the one we got was probably the best we could hope for with that. Uh, the rather disgusting metaphor about polishing a turd comes to mind. Oh, come on, I've already gone over this a whole bunch of times. They're just not for me. I prefer my books to be, you know, good. I skimmed one or two of them while I was doing the original review. Um, it was a while ago, so I've forgotten most of the details, though I do remember enough to know that Return to Oz gave no fucks. Hello, beautiful Dom. So, my question is, what have been the best and worst things that have come with dealing with internet fame? Also, you have a favorite sandwich? Now, I, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, 221 Baker, but just for a second there, before you opened your mouth and an American accent came out, I really thought you might be famous Irish YouTuber Jacksepticeye. I'm actually quite glad you qualified it as internet fame, because, I mean, I always say that internet fame is pretty much the same as regular fame, but without the money, recognition, lifestyle, and, well, fame. 
But to answer your question, uh, the best part is probably a toss-up between getting to meet beautiful watchers in person at conventions, because that's so fun, and um, when people message me saying that my stupid videos have helped them through a hard time or something like that, because that just is so deeply moving to me. And as for your second, much more important question, uh, Subway melt on wheat bread, regular cheese, no salad or sauces. Uh, I'm kind of a minimalist kind of guy, just give me the meat and the cheese and I'm a happy man. Ah, uh, sorry, I got all the way to editing before I realised I'd ignored the second part of your question. Um, there's not a huge amount of downside to it as of yet. Um, there's been a steady increase in the pressure involved though, I have to admit. Um, when I got to around the 20 to 30,000 subscriber mark, that's when I, I really started to realise how important it was that I have to maintain a certain level of quality in every single video I do and a rigid upload schedule if I want to, you know, not let people down and maintain a steady channel growth because it is just so easy to stagnate with that sort of thing. So yeah, I, c I can feel that hanging over my head quite a lot, but uh, it really is just completely overwhelmed by the positive stuff, so I'm not looking for sympathy, I swear. What is a question that you've always wanted to answer, but never had the opportunity to be asked? Um, I guess... Good Lord the Dom, how did you just save the world using nothing but your wits and a pair of novelty Pokemon-themed chopsticks? If you reviewed something like the Les Mis musical movie, would you review it as an adaptation of the play or an adaptation of the book? In principle, I'd probably do the play first and then the film, either as a double feature or, you know, two separate episodes. But in practice, I am not touching Les Mis. No, thank you. I do not have time to read a book that's three times the size of the fucking Bible. Plus, you know. And I'm Javier! Hello, the Dom. I was wondering, what's the best insult you can come up with? Good sir, your face is reminiscent of a bloated leech that has died and marinated for a week in a vat of the putrid, gangrenous drippings of Satan's infected testicle. I originally started watching Lost in Adaptation because I was watching a similar series of videos from a much larger channel and YouTube recommended it to me. And I like Lost in Adaptation a whole lot better, but I was wondering if it ever gets intimidating doing reviews when bigger channels are cutting from the same cloth. Honestly, no, not really. I mean, mostly because of what you just said. You know, you know the bigger channels exist, but you prefer mine. Because of that, I'm pretty sure I'll eventually grind my rivals into dust and reign king of all adaptation reviewers. <laughs> uh, what I mean to say is the internet's a big place, there's room for all of us. On a more light-hearted note, I was wondering how you came up with the name for your cockatiel. He's named after a pterodactyl from a Don Bluth movie. It was my favourite film when I was a wee nipper. Also, I'm gonna like put the picture up on the screen right now or something, but this has been driving me crazy and I wanted to tell you, it might just be me, but you look a lot like this guy I know. Just tell me if I'm crazy, please. <laughs> Okay, well, you're not crazy. I mean, I don't see it myself, but I get this all the time. Like, every week someone tells me I'm the twin of a friend of theirs. Um, I guess I just have one of those faces that looks like everyone else's face. I own a pygmy puff. I just, I want you to know that. His name is Guybrush. Aw, he's adorable. I will take him from you. He will be mine. Hi, I'm Mia from Canada. And my question for the Dom is, what's your least favorite comment to receive on your videos? Love ya. Well, fun fact, absolutely every YouTuber completely detests the comments that start actually, to be fair, and you forgot. Uh, not because we believe ourselves to be infallible, just because it's, it's the sheer amount of them that we get on every video. It just starts to grate on the nerves after a while. So even if someone's trying to, you know, just give you constructive feedback or they're just trying to correct what they thought was an honest mistake, uh, we just stop appreciating it after a while just because they're in all the time. Uh, however, for me personally, the ones that stand out even amongst those are the ones where someone starts their comments that way, and then proceeds to describe something that's fundamentally just not true. I mean, either because they've got their personal headcanon mixed up with the actual book, or it's just been ages since they read it and they're remembering the details wrong. It's, uh, it's basically insult to injury when someone tries to correct me with inaccurate information. Dear the Dom, what Hogwarts slash Ilvermoney house are you in? None of them. I'm a muggle. Yeah, he's a hella muggle. Hey Dom, it's Alyssa. I was wondering, since you have reviewed now the Percy Jackson series and you seem to have liked it, which cabin would you be in and why? Well, uh, I rather suspect I'd be in the cabin of whatever deity chose to copulate with my mortal parent. Uh, you don't really get a say in the matter like you do with the Sorting Hat. Sorry, I know you were asking if I think I share any traits associated with any particular group of half-bloods. Um, 
Apollo, I guess? He seemed like a pretty chill dude. Uh, I'm far too lazy to be in the Ares cabin. I don't like stealing shit, so Hermes is out, and... I'm pretty crap at making stuff, so I suppose Hephaestus is a no-no as well. Yeah, let's, let's, let's stick with Apollo. Miss Uthadam, if you were asked to take part in an adaptation from a book to a movie, say in the form of director, producer, or writer, but the book itself wasn't exactly one of your favorites, would you still do it? Okay, well, working under the assumption that I reversed my decision not to pursue a career in the film industry, um, yeah, I guess I'd be okay working on a book I don't like. Um, in fact, that might actually be significantly less stressful, as I'd be less worried about doing it justice, you know? Obviously, I would draw the line at something like Fifty Shades of Grey, because that perpetuates a dangerous message as far as I'm concerned, but, you know, other than that... So, my question for you was if seeing a movie before you read the book at all influences how, like, excusable you find changes in adaptation. Like, if seeing the movie first puts, like, a preconception in your mind of this is how the story should go, so you're more forgiving, or you find yourself making excuses for the changes it made. Uh, yes, I believe I've touched upon this in the past. It does make an absolutely massive difference to me. I mean, not always enough to guarantee I'll still like the film afterwards, but it does cushion the blow quite a lot. Um, I try not to let it, because I know that's not fair or impartial, and that's kind of my job as a critic, but, I mean, what else can I do except try and be aware of it, you know? My question is, what part of the YouTube process is your least favorite? For me, it's editing. I'm gonna have to edit this and I hate that. What? You're crazy! Editing's the best part, writing's the stressful bit. I mean, if you fuck that up, the entire thing's worthless, and that's the thing I have to try hardest at not to suck at, you know? Hi Dom, I'm Rhiannon. I wanted to know how you stay motivated making YouTube videos and manage your time working for yourself. Well, I get quite a lot of enjoyment out of doing this in the first place, so I don't require much exterior motivation. Uh, but on the occasions that I do feel my resolve flagging, I find that the large amount of money I'm given to do it is probably the single most consistent motivation. Before you judge me, that's hopefully not as superficial as it initially sounds. Um, because I earn way more through Patreon than I've ever done in my life with any shitty day job, uh, I've been able to do things like fly over to America several times a year to see my girlfriend and save up to actually move there in October. It also means I've been able to afford to go to conventions and meet people I wouldn't otherwise have seen, or uh, I've been steadily able to upgrade my film setup so I can actually be proud of my videos when I'm done with them instead of ashamed. So yeah, the uh, the cheddar as a means to an end is a very powerful insensitive. Insensitive? Incentive, sorry. Bear in mind though that I specifically just said most consistent there. Um, Markiplier said something recently uh, about motivation that really resounded with me. Um, he said something to the effect that uh, it's a common misconception that there's any one thing that can keep someone motivated. Uh, motivation is a fleeting thing that's ever-changing, and different things will end up motivating you at different times. So, if you're looking to achieve something big, the best thing you can do is just keep your eyes open for things that might motivate you, uh, and then capitalize on it when it does. Oh, and in regards to managing my time, um, I, I really don't. I'm basically working on this stuff just all the time, 24-7. Um, it's something I'm told I'm not going to be allowed to do anymore once I'm co-inhabiting. <laughs> Hello, the Dom. Name's Heather, longtime fan, longtime patron, and uh, I just wanted to know. You mentioned in a recent video that you had originally planned on reviewing video games, and while I love Lost in Adaptation as it is, that got me wondering, what video games were you planning on reviewing? Um, and uh, I guess as a follow-up question, if you want to answer that, then what are some of your favorite video games aside from Mass Effect? Uh, what do you think of Mass Effect Andromeda? And uh, have you played Dragon Age, uh, Mass Effect sister series? Okay, well, first of all, I must stress that I am only toying with the idea of doing Lost in Adaptation on video games currently. Um, I agreed to do Metro 2033 as like a pilot episode for that sort of thing. Um, if I have a miserable time, that may remain the only one I ever cover. As for video games, uh, yes, definitely to Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Uh, I also like the Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 and Jade Empire. Um, can you tell I'm a Bioware RPG? fan. Uh, I'm also quite fond of Empire Total War despite the AI problems, and uh, in case everyone missed it, I currently run a Minecraft server for my lovely Patreon, because I like to build towers. What book are you reading now, and do you have any recommendations? Bye! Well, I I'm currently reading Rebecca for the show and War Factory for fun in my free time, uh, but I I'm trying to make it a policy not to recommend books to people unless I know them really well, because, I mean, what book you like is so tied into what sort of person you are, as far as I'm concerned, that, I mean, all I can really do is tell you what books I enjoy, and that really shouldn't mean that much to you unless you think we're very similar people. Hello, my beautiful Dom. 
Sorry I didn't want to show my face so I took some generic overcast nature shots for you. My question is, have you read much in the way of classical literature? Let's say that classical is pre-20th century books. I know you've done some writers like Dickens and Stoker for Lost in Adaptation but was just wondering if you read that sort of stuff in general. I suppose another way of phrasing the question would be, what's the oldest book you've ever read? I'd love to know. Cheers. Well, GLaDOS from Portal, um, I guess that would be The Odyssey by Homer. Uh, I, I do occasionally read some really old stuff, but uh, honestly, it's more out of a sense of curiosity to know what like literature was like back then, as opposed to really enjoying it. Hi, The Dom. Are there any recently announced adaptations that you're most looking forward to? Particularly any that haven't been adapted to screen already? Uh, to be completely honest, I've become a little bit jaded towards new adaptations of late. Uh, I, I prefer to be pessimistic than pleasantly surprised when it's good, as opposed to looking forward to it and then getting let down. So, uh, yeah, right now I'm not really particularly looking forward to anything. Recently I have read the Hornblower novels after watching both the film version of Captain Hornblower starring Gregory Peck and the A&E series starring Ewan Gruffid. How do you rate both these adaptations in relation to their source material? I'm gonna level with you, Captain. To my shame, this is the first I've heard of the Gregory Peck version. Uh, please excuse me for about 90 minutes. Unfurling all the romance and excitement of C.S. Forrester's mighty saga of the seas, Warner Brothers take you before the mast with the greatest naval hero of all time. In the fabulous days when iron men hurled wooden ships into mortal combat, when history hung on the slice of a sword, and only one man stood between the tyrant Bonaparte and his dream of world conquest, Captain Horatio Hornblower who'd advanced into the fury of a thousand cannon, but retreated at the smile of one beautiful woman. Hey, I thought that was pretty good. Um, it's been an awful long time since I've read the Hornblower novel, so I could be giving it more leeway than I really should. Um, very strange that they chose to cast an American to play a British naval officer, though. I mean, he, he didn't even try and hide his accent. As to the TV series, um, I'm afraid it falls into the same category as Sharp did for me, i.e. Um, I liked it well enough until I read the books and found out how hard the TV show was pushing its own tropes and its own storylines, so it made me retroactively not like it as much. I think my biggest issue with the TV show was how nice they made Hornblower. They made his character as pure as the driven snow. Um, I always thought he was a bit of a dickhead in the books, and I kind of liked that. I, I enjoy a flawed character. Um, so he's just a bit too much of an angel in the TV series. Uh, my name is Hannah Patwell, and I, li and I currently live in Auburn, Washington. Ah, uh, yes, an East Coast state known for its exports of novelty party capes. I haven't learned a lot about America yet. I'm going to swat up before I move. My question to you is, would you consider doing a musical adaptation like Cats, Phantom, or Les Mis. Well, Le Mis and my refusal to touch it with a 10-foot barge pole we've already covered, um, as for reviewing plays for Lost in Adaptation in general, um, it's actually in exactly the same situation as video games. Um, I've been talked into reviewing the 25th anniversary Phantom of the Opera at the Royal Albert Hall recording as like a trial pilot episode. Um, if it goes well, I may do more. If not, then I will have to let it be known that it will be films only from now on. Okay, that's a wrap. Uh, again, I am so sorry that I wasn't able to get through all the submissions. Uh, I actually wrote out another the two pages of answers for this, but unfortunately due to a bunch of life stuff springing up out of nowhere, uh, I just didn't have time to film them. So, I mean, I feel really terrible about it because some of them look really good. It's clear uh, some people put so much effort into them. So what I'm going to do at the very least is email everyone back so at least they can see what I would have said. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me, my beautiful watchers. I will see you soon. And, uh, by the way, he is totally doing Game of Thrones soon. Damn it, Terence!